Yes. Your credentials seem to be in order. One moment, I will get the jewels. You'll pardon me, of course, if I seem overcautious. But after all, the Baronian crown jewels would prove an excellent prize to anyone who could successfully steal them. Ah, oh, there you are. Thirty million dollars worth of unset stones. Beauties, every one of them. What's that? The crystals are whirling. Whirling. Turning. 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 Stop them. They make me dizzy. Yes. Yes, you may take the jewels. I will be able to recognize you. And I will tell. I will tell. You, sir, are short, dark, and swarthy. And you, madam, are tall, beautiful, and blonde. I will tell. I will tell. I will tell. I will tell. I will... Oh. Huh? What? What? Good heavens! They're gone. The jewels are gone. Help! Help! Must give the alarm. Help! Stop them! Stop them! They've stolen the Baronian jewel! <laughs> student of crime psychology has many times provided the police with a solution to a baffling crime. There's an interesting case ahead for the doctor today. We'll call it the case of the whirling mirrors. Dan. Oh, yes, Rusty? Where's Baronia? Baronia? Yeah, where is it? <laughs> I don't know. Some some kind of principality over in Europe or Asia or maybe Africa, for all I know. Why? I was reading this morning that they were selling their crown jewels over here in this country. They're being displayed at Carter's jewelry store. Oh, their crown heads are over here, too, I understand. Running a restaurant somewhere. Oh, just think. Thirty million dollars worth of diamonds. And I haven't got just one little teeny one to wear uh, on this thing. Rusty, are you proposing again? Oh, go scale a fish. <laughs> Oh, somebody's at the door resting. I'm busy. Oh, well. Uh, come in. Mr. Daniel Danfield. Yes? I'm Sidney Thomas. I'm from Carter's Jewelry Store. Carter's? Oh, come in, Mr. Thomas, and close the door. Thank you. Can I have a chair? Yes, I believe I will sit down. I'm exhausted. Been under a very great strain. Yes, I can see you have. You still are, for that matter. Would you like to tell me about it? Dr. Danfield... The Baronian jewels have been stolen. Baronian jewels? Why, Dan, we were just talking... Quiet, Rusty. That's uh, very interesting, Mr. Thomas, but uh, I should imagine their recovery would be a routine police job. Just uh, why did you come to me? Because of the circumstances under which they were taken, Doctor. Oh, yes? What circumstances? I, I don't know. Can't remember. Can't remember? <laughs> Wait a minute. Were you present when they were stolen? Yes, yes, indeed. I myself was showing them to the party. And uh, this party, uh, they held you up at the point of a gun? I I don't know. I I don't think so. They might have. I, I can't remember. Now, Mr. Thomas, do you mind if I examine your eyes? My eyes? Why, why, no. But why? I have perfect vision. Yes, vision, perhaps. Yeah, just a moment. This, mm -hmm. uh, this won't hurt a bit. What are you doing that for, Dan? And I'm not quite sure yet, Resty. Now, Mr. Thomas, surely you saw the jewels actually taken. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't remember. <laughs> now, look, if I'm to be of any help to you, you've got to tell me everything. Oh, back absolutely nothing. The only thing I know is that I was showing the jewels to this party, a man and a woman. They produced a letter from the Baronian consul authorizing them to look at the gems. Yes. The next thing I remember, I was lying on the floor. The man and woman were gone. Also the diamonds. I got up and immediately gave the alarm. Well, maybe they hit you on the head, knocked you out. I don't think so. I, 
I'd have a bump if they did that, wouldn't I? Well, at least you'd have a headache. And uh, that's all you absolutely remember? All but one thing. I can describe this pair perfectly. Well, that might help. The, the man was short, dark, and swarthy. And the woman was a tall, stately blonde. Very beautiful. Hmm. Well, Mr. Thomas, have you any reason to suspect that anyone followed you here? I wouldn't be surprised. I am definitely under suspicion. Being the last to handle the jewels and all. Why? Well, there's a man standing just outside watching this office window. Oh? Oh, yes. I know him. He's the top investigator for the insurance company that holds the policies on the diamonds. Oh, Rusty, uh, step out and ask him to come in like a good girl. Well, how else would I ask him to come in? Hmm. Now, uh... These people that you described, Mr. Thomas, would you be able to identify them in case you ever saw them again? Definitely. Positively. Good, good. We have to try and see that you get the chance. You must do something, Dr. Danfield. I can't stand this suspicion. The looks everybody gives me at the store. I'm an honorable man, Doctor. If those jewels aren't found, it'll drive me out of my mind. I shall do what I can. Here he is, Dan. I didn't even have to smile. Pretty. Oh, so the little rat came to you, did he? Uh-uh, uh-uh. Careful of your language, my friend. He's the guy who stole those diamonds, all right. All we're trying to do is find out where he hid them. Mr. Brown, I simply must insist that you stop making those accusations. I did not take them. I didn't. And I'm inclined to believe you, Mr. Thomas. Oh, Mr. Brown, what would you do if I recovered the uh, loot for you? <laughs> you could write your own ticket. Good, good, I will. Uh, hand me a pen, Rusty. <laughs> we promise to pay... For their recovery, 1% of the total value, approximately $300,000. There. Yeah, sign there, Mr. Brown. $300,000? Oh, isn't that enough? I can make it more no, if you no, wish. I... No, no, no. We can pay it. It's worth it. Give me the pen. With pleasure. There. Yeah. There. Yeah. Well, Rusty, maybe you'll be getting that teeny-weeny little diamond after all. In a moment, we'll return for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield, but first... Back to Michael Dunn for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. His Excellency, the Council will see you, Dr. Danfield. Thank you, Captain. Oh, Dan, look at the Council. Is he tall and handsome? I love that uniform. Rusty, control yourself, please. This way, please. Thank you. Miss Fairfax and Dr. Daniel Danfield, His Excellency Sergei Alexov, First Consul for the Principality of Varonia. I am charmed, Miss Fairfax. Thanks. The feeling is mutual. Hmm. You may retire, Igor. Yes, Your Excellency. And you are Dr. Danfield. I have heard often of you and your work. Well, thank you, Your Excellency. Crime psychology is of very great interest to me. I myself studied only the great Professor Hutchon at Leipzig. There is none better, you're it. <laughs> Do you mind if we uh, drop all this formality? It uh, interferes with my thinking. <laughs> but of course. <laughs> ah, you Americans, so impetuous, so frank, but I, I like it. You may call me Sergei. Oh, and uh, you can call me Rusty. Rusty? Ah, what a remarkable name. So simple, yet so descriptive. <laughs> you know something? You're cute. I don't know, Rusty. Maybe we'd better go back to being formal. Oh, hmm? This is very refreshing. <laughs> now, Dr. Dunfield, I presume you came here to ask about the Baronian Jewels, huh? Quite true, Sergei. I, uh, I would like to ask a little information. Yes, but of course. If you can only recover the jewels, our country will be extremely grateful. I'd like your permission to bring in another party, if you don't mind, Sergei. Yes. Whom may I ask? Mr. Sidney Thomas, from whom the jewels were stolen. He's waiting outside in a cab. Mr. Thomas? Mm, he is the one the police suspect. Yes. I am not sure, but he might become dangerous if he were cornered. Oh, well, uh, I'll vouch for him. <laughs> but certainly. You may have him come in. Oh, thank you. Uh, Rusty, would you mind? 
but certainly. Hmm. Looks to me like I'm doing all the legwork on this case. Hmm, that's a good girl. And uh, you don't have to go all the way down. Just call to him from the top of the steps. You huh? aren't kidding. You have a very charming secretary, Dr. Dunfield. Forever? <laughs> well, you know, I never noticed. <laughs> and now, uh, why is it that you wish to bring in this, uh, this Thomas person? Well, Mr. Thomas swears that he'll be able to identify the thieves if he ever sets eyes on them. Oh, but surely you do not suspect any of us here at the consulate? No, not necessarily, but uh, for $300,000, I'm not overlooking any debts. We have returned just like the swallows to Capistrano. Good, good. Oh, Mr. Thomas, step over here, if you please, will you? Yes, indeed. Uh, Mr. Thomas, this is His Excellency Sergei Alexov, First Consul for the Principality of Baronia. I'm glad to meet you. Charmed. Uh, take a good look at Mr. Alexov, Thomas, and uh, tell me, have you ever seen him before? What? Look at me. <laughs> but of course. Yes, yes, indeed. Take a good look, Mr. Thomas. A very careful look. I wish to be cleared of these silly suspicions at once. Well, how about it, Thomas? No, Dr. Danfield. I've never seen this man before. Never in my whole life. <laughs> fine, fine. Now, anything else, Doctor? Would you please show His Excellency the letter, Mr. Thomas? Oh, yes, indeed. I, I, I have it right here. Ah, here it is. Well, Sergey? Yes. Yes, this letter came from here. It is in our official stationery. The, uh, the signature. It isn't a forgery? No, I'm quite sure that I signed that letter myself. Well, hmm. good. Now all Sergey has to do is tell us to whom he gave the letter, and the case is solved. Oh, I'm afraid it is not, not as easy as that, my dear Rossi. This is more or less of a form letter. A form letter? Yes, you see, we have had so many prospective purchases for the jewels that quite a number of these letters were given out. Oh. Or all to responsible persons, of course, but I'm afraid there is no way of ascertaining as to just who received this particular one. Uh, tell me, did you give them out yourself? Uh, no, that was left up to Captain Eagle. The captain also investigated each person personally. Oh, well, then perhaps he may have some idea. Uh, would you mind having the captain come in? Oh, not at all. I will ring. Fine. You are quite thorough, I must say, Dr. Dunphy. Well, in a case like this, one has to be sure of each and every little angle, you know. You are giving me a great deal of confidence. Mm -hmm. Wow. Dan, get a load of her. Yes, indeed, Rusty. Oh, that's my type. Tall, willowy brunette. Oh, yeah? I'll scratch your eyes out. You wanted me, Your Excellency? Yes, Igor. Uh, you and Olga going out? Yes, Sergei. Igor was taking me out to look at a new meat. That's the man. That's he. What? What did you say, Mr. Thomas? That's he, the short, dark, swarthy man. That's the man who stole the jewels. I could pick him out of a million. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry it turned out this way, Your Excellency, but uh, it was necessary to turn your aid over to the police. I cannot believe it. It, it. it is impossible. Captain Igor, a traitor to his country. Mr. Thomas's identification was positive, Your Excellency. Ah, yes, I suppose so. Now, if we can only get Igor to confess and tell us where he has hidden the jewels. This is all of your doing, Sergei. My husband didn't do this thing. Olga, please, not in front of our guests. You have always hated me. Hated me because I have resisted your advances. And now you get even with me by persecuting my poor Igor. Igor is innocent, I tell you. Innocent. This is all you're doing. You're nothing but a low, down, miserable, filthy, lousy rat. Get out, Olga. Get out. Get out. Phew. When she learned the English, they taught her all the words. I must apologize for Olga's outburst. I would say the young lady was a bit upset. <laughs> Olga has always envied my position. as She believes that Igor should have it. Ah, uh, well, how often an ambitious woman will come between a man and his friend. Yes, indeed. How often. I must admit that you solved the case very quickly, Dr. Danfield. My country will forever be in your debt. Oh, nothing, nothing at all. Wonderful. Ten minutes and the case is solved. Oh, uh, there's just one more little thing, Your Excellency. Yes? And what is that? The recovery of 30 million in diamonds. Remember? <laughs> In a 
moment we'll return for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. But first... And now back to Michael Dunn for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. <laughs> Mr. Thomas, now that we're back at my office, I'm uh, I'm going to ask you to submit to a little experiment. Well, Doctor, if you wish it. But I'm at a loss as to what more we can do now that we have the criminals safely under lock and key. You really believe that, don't you, Mr. Thomas? Well, certainly. It's impossible that I could be mistaken. Well, we'll uh, just try this experiment and see. What are you going to do, Dan? Mr. Thomas is about to be hypnotized. Hypnotized? But uh, it I, won't I, I don't... It won't hurt you a bit. It won't hurt you a bit. Uh, well, very well, Dr. Danfield. If you think it'll do any good, I, I'll i submit. It's the only thing it will. Now, uh, now, if you just gaze steadily into this instrument here. Yes, sir. Now, Rusty, will you throw the switch? All right. Whirling mirrors. They're turning. Turning. They're spinning, Mr. Thomas. Yes. Watch the mirrors spin. Turning, 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 turning. Yes, and your mind is turning, Mr. Thomas. Yes. Turning back to the day when the diamonds were stolen. Turning, turning, turning. Now, Mr. Thomas, you're back in the vault. Two people are entering. They show you a letter. Yes, a letter. You bring out the jewels. Set the tray on the counter. Yes. The two people look at the jewels. Yes. Yes. Look at the jewels. But the man is carrying something. It's turning. 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 I, I can see it. Mirror. Turning. 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 Now the man is saying something to you. He's impressing something on you. Yes. You're looking at him very closely. I am. You're looking at the girl very closely. Yes. Yes. And you will remember them. I will remember. 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 Yes. I I will remember. I remember. Good. Rusty, turn up the machine now, but quietly. I don't want to disturb Mr. Thomas' state of hypnosis. You mean he's still hypnotized? Yes. They're going to leave him that way? No, just for the time being. And now grab your coat, Rusty. We're all going for an automobile ride. Where? Never mind, you'll see. And I think Mr. Sidney Thomas will at last tell us who really swiped the jewels. Funny, Dan. I, I know that Mr. Thomas here is in a hypnotic state, but he certainly doesn't act like it. Well, for a fact, just uh, certain parts of his mind are under hypnotic control. Certain parts? Yes, yes. His uh, conscious mind has been transferred back to that part of the subconscious wherein lies the memory of the events that transpired on the morning of the robbery, you see. He now sees that robbery just as it really happened. <laughs> you hope. I hope. In, uh, in all other respects, our friend here is strictly normal. Well, I always thought that hypnotized people went to sleep. Oh, no, 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 indeed. A person can be hypnotized so that he will obey orders, even if the orders are effective at a much later time. This is uh, called the conditioning process. You know, Dan, you ought to write a book. On hypnotism? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've still got lots to learn. Well, tell me more, teacher. Well, a person can be conditioned so that he'll receive and obey orders that may be given to him in a letter, over the telephone, yes, even over the radio. That is, if the hypnotist could get the script and write in a few choice words. Fancy that. What is radio coming to? And he can also be conditioned so that his release from his hypnotic spell will come at, uh, say, the ringing of a doorbell or a clock striking a certain hour. Why don't you try hypnotizing me, Dan? I make a willing subject. Mm. Uh, that's the consulate just up ahead, isn't it, Dr. Dan? Yes, 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 it is, Mr. Thomas. Fine. Oh, there's a, there's a parking space. Yeah, 
How's that for a neat parking job? Couldn't do better myself. Oh, come on, Mr. Thomas. We get out here. Huh? Oh, oh, yes, of course. I never could figure out why all government buildings have so many steps. Hi, George, we're just in time so as not to miss his excellency. He's just coming out. Oh, and Olga's with him. The way she's hanging onto his arm doesn't look like she's mad anymore. Oh, they're carrying bags. There they are. That's them. The short, dark man and the tall, beautiful blonde. Well, I Stop thought them. so. Stop them. They stole the Baronian jewels. Good boy, Sidney. You were what Mr. Thomas said, Your Excellency. You'd better stop. Oh, no. You are not going to get me. No, now. Come on, Olga. We have to run for you. Oh, oh, yeah, Stop. Don't interfere, Dan Peter. Put the gun and I will shoot. I don't think you dare. Oh, but I would. Uh, just get away from you. Sergey, don't let him. I will. Don't let him. I will. Rusty, what happened? I'm, I'm hit. Dan. Your Excellency, I'm going to kill you for that. Get him, Doctor. Here's one for Igor. Let's see, Doctor. We have a punch, my friend. One for Mr. Thomas. That's right. How do you like this, Your Excellency? Don't. Don't you please. These are the rusty, every one of them. Cut him. You kill him, Doctor. Pick him up. He's killing Sergei. He's killing him. Oh, Doctor. You had enough, Your Excellency? Stop it. Stop it. I can't. Stop. Dr. Danfield, stop it. Stop it. But you were yellow. Stop it. There's an extra one for good measure. Dr. Dr. Danfield, please. Oh, I wouldn't anymore, Dr. Danfield. The fellow's out completely. If he's killed Rusty, I'll come back and finish the job. I'm afraid that won't be necessary. I think he's already finished. In a moment, we'll return for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. But first... Back to Michael Dunn for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. Dr. Bembrook, call surgery. Dr. Bembrook, call surgery. May I uh, go in now, nurse? Yes. Only for a moment, Dr. Danfield. And don't excite the patient. No, I won't. Well, hi, Ken. Hi, Dan. Hey, does it hurt? Uh-huh. Oh, well, not much. How's Sergei? Oh, he'll live, but uh, he'll remember me for many a day. I'm glad you didn't kill him. <laughs> so am I. Now. Mr. Thomas says he, he never saw a man as angry as you were. He, he says you fought like a tiger. Oh, purely psychological reaction. Oh, can't you forget your psychology for just a minute? Hmm? Oh, <laughs> sure, sure, of course. I'm dying to know how everything turned out. Well, it, uh... It seems that His Excellency and Captain Igor's wife had uh, fallen in love. Oh, what about that tantrum Olga threw when her husband was arrested? Mm, just a bit of theatrics to try and throw us off the real trail. And it was Olga and Sergei who stole the jewel? Yep, they were the ones, all right. I thought that Mr. Thomas said the thief was short, dark, swarthy. His girlfriend a blonde. Oh, he did. But Sergei and Olga are just the opposite. Exactly. And that is just what Sergei planted in Mr. Thomas's mind when he hypnotized him down there at the vault. He conditioned him by minutely describing Igor and impressing it so thoroughly upon his mind that Sidney truly believed that Igor was a guilty person. The barn part was uh, to throw us off completely and, of course, protect the beauteous Olga. But, but how was it that Mr. Thomas finally was able to identify the real thief? Oh, that was because I re-hypnotized him. Oh. I took him back to the same hypnotic state he was in at the time of the robbery. You see, in that way, he was able to see these people as he'd been told to see them. He, therefore, identified them with his eyes through hypnotic suggestion. I see. Dan? Yes, Rusty? What made you think that Mr. Thomas had been in a hypnotized state in the first place? Well, several things, Rusty. Mr. Thomas's inability to remember the details of the crime, for one thing the condition of his eyes when I examined him for another. And then, uh, then of course, Sergei's <laughs> mistake of mentioning that he'd studied under Professor Hartshorn at Leipzig. Professor Hartshorn? Yes, yeah, yeah, he's the greatest exponent of hypnotism in the world and oh. the inventor of the whirling mirror method. And, of course, 
You recovered the jewels. Oh, yes, yes, yes. His Excellency had them stashed away in his suitcase. He and Olga were taking the crown jewels with him. They had their tickets all bought the beautiful Isle of Nowhere. Oh, you lucky boy. You'll get $300,000, and all I got is a bullet hole in my, my shoulder. Oh? Yeah, must be. Yes, Dan? Look. Dan? Diamonds? Six beautiful diamonds. Yep, they're all yours. Mine? Mm hmm. One for every day in the week. Oh, Dan. Uh, what'll I have for Sunday? Well, I tell you, on Sunday you get me. <laughs> <laughs> A diamond in the rough if I ever saw one. Uh-huh. Well, Rusty, remember your uh, sore shoulder. Oh. Dan. Yes, Rusty? Get rough, Dan. Get rough. Mm hmm. 